So I'm back with another little video and in this video I'm going to try to figure out the specifications of an unmarked transformer. The other day I opened a drawer and there was a bag in the drawer and in the bag was this transformer of course unmarked completely. Uh, it probably came out of a unit that I parted out and I decided to keep the transformer and I must have been in a hurry because I didn't mark anything. So of course that's a big puzzle. So if you do something like this and you keep the old transformers, don't do it like I do. Uh, mark the leads. Put little tags on them and look at the schematic if you have it or measure or go ahead and measure the voltages. So if you ever do need to use the old transformer, you know what's what. If not, you're going to be in the same situation that basically I am. Sometimes, you, let's say for example, um, the voltage say you need a transformer for a piece of equipment so the voltage might be the same and the current rating might be the same for transformer but then the physical fit is not the same so either it doesn't fit or you have to do some modification uh, I really don't go that route I have to say say if I'm working on a piece of equipment has a bad transformer I don't won't get another transformer and do drilling or making some kind of brackets or something because I like to sell all of my stuff in original condition not modified in this kind of way if it would be for myself okay but not for um, other people anyways what I have to do here is label these leads first there's only five of them thank God there's some with a lot more and then I'll go ahead and go from there and here we go I did the labeling you can see one two three four five I hope this holds um, in case you're wondering why pink I don't know I, these are my wife's so um, I don't have like a preference for the color pink if you see where I'm going with this now looking at the transformer just externally um, physically I can already guess that these two small thin wires here they're going to be secondary and like this here I've seen this before um, this thick notice we have three thick wires so this would be the primary side and this third one what I've seen before is with radios or uh, stereo cassette recorders radio cassette recorders is they use this one to change the voltage for example where you can switch between say 110 120 or 220 230 right so um, so one of these I'm guessing would be for 110 or 120 with with the white and the other one would be 220 230 so it would be either white and red would be one voltage and white and yellow would be the other voltage what I'm going to do is before I apply any kind of voltage to this thing is I'm going to go ahead and um, use an ohmmeter first this, these things aren't holding any good and go ahead and take some um, ohmmeter measurements figure out the resistance and I'm going to say in general I would say that the primary side because it's subjected to higher voltage is going to go ahead and have um, more resistance than the secondary side say if the let's say the primary was 120 and the secondary was 12 um, of course you would need less turns to get 12 volts then then for example 120 so I would say this is going to have more, or rather these three are going to have more resistance than these two. And of course I'm losing my labels, so let me put those back on. And before I start, I made myself a little chart here. Um, it's not pretty, but it'll do the job. See here, leads, resistance, uh, resistance between lead one and two, two and three, between one and three, and then five and six. I already know five and six are going to be the uh, the thin red ones, which I think is the secondary. And of course, the other ones 
should be the primary. So let me go ahead and start between, measure between leads uh, one and three. So right now I'm measuring between the leads uh, one and three, which is the white and the red. And here I've got 1,250 ohms, you can say, or 1.25K. Next, I'm doing between 2 and 3, which will be the white and the yellow. I'm looking through the, of course, looking through the camera here, so I'm having a little bit slight problem here. Okay, so that was 308 ohms. So I can write that down, 1 and 3. Um, no, 2 and 3, excuse me. Uh, 308. And then we'll go ahead and measure between 1 and 2, which would be between the yellow and the red. So we're measuring between the yellow and the red, and it comes out to 940 ohms, about. So let me go ahead and get the secondary. Now here's the secondary 2.5, about 2.5 ohms. So this fits in with what I said earlier. The basically the secondary winding here, if it's like in a transformer from a um, radio cassette recorder or stereo receiver, something like that the windings on the secondary they're going to have less resistance than the primary because the voltage on the secondary is going to be lower than the voltage on the primary which is your power line your mains voltage so i said that was 2.5 let me write that down see i should have did all of this when i pulled the uh transformer from the unit but i was in such a hurry i guess so I got to do this the hard way and I'm probably not going to end up using the transformer anyways. This is just kind of um, kind of showing how I would, go, I would go ahead and try to get some information. So since you would have to have more windings for the 220 volts, I'm guessing this would be between 1 and 3. Um, between the red and white terminal that was 1250 ohms and between the white and the yellow uh, which was white and yellow which was uh, 2 and 3 which was 308 ohms that would be the 110 to 20 right this is just based on past experience because I've seen this before uh, this kind of configuration. The line voltage is not between these two here, these leads, but between the one on the other side here, the secondary side, and uh, these here, between the white and red, or here the white and the yellow. This is based upon uh, past experience. So that's what I'm guessing at, of course, and this would be the now this is coming apart too. I gotta staple this here too. Get the stapler. Now I'm set up here and I need an AC voltage source. I can't use DC because a transformer is a AC component. It won't work with DC. So I'm using a variable isolation transformer. And I would recommend getting a variable isolation transformer, not only for safety reasons, but because you can also vary the voltage like I'm doing right now. Um, so, also what I did here, if you look, I just used two alligator clips in because I'm going to be feeding in a really low voltage for the moment. If not, I wouldn't use these little flimsy little... Um, alligator clip wires and I'm feeding that to the primary here which was between 
leads one and three which had the highest resistance and if you remember I said that's probably where the 220 230 volt winding is since it has the most resistance and at the other end I am using a little multimeter and I've got it in AC position to um, read the AC voltage coming from what I believe to be the secondary now when we have a transformer for example um, and we look at the ratio of the voltage between the primary and secondary say if the primary is 120 and the secondary is 12 volts so we're going to have a 10 to 1 ratio because for example um, 120 divided by 10 is 12 so 120 volts divided by 10 would be 12 volts so that means basically if I fed in 12 volts AC for example in the primary the secondary should give me then about 1.2 volts because it's 10 times as less the ratio is going to stay the same it really doesn't matter that much um, how much voltage we're feeding into it but I think you have to have a certain level of voltage I don't think you can feed in uh, say in the primary 1.5 volts or something like that what I'm going to do right now I've got it set up for I'm feeding 6 volts into it basically and with 6 volts AC I'm getting about 350 millivolts AC so remember I said the line voltage was going to be 220 or 230 I think so if I took that 6 volts and I times it by 40 remember the 6 volts is coming in through the um, the variable isolation transfer that's 240 volts so I had to swap batteries my camera thing doesn't last a long time now where was I um, right now I'm feeding in 6 volts AC um, because again as the transformer is an AC component you can't use a DC power supply and I'm feeding that between pins or rather leads 1 and 3 which I suspected was the 220 volt 220 230 volt primary winding um, and this is what I'm getting which is B.359 volts or 359 millivolts uh, for the sake of simplicity let's it say it's 0.3 volts um, so basically it's 20 times basically 20 times less than what I'm f feeding into it right. let me go ahead now and bring this up to 12 volts slowly in case you want to know my isolation transformer is fused you could also put a fuse in the lines here if you have a little bit different setup than I do so I'm not going to take it up to line voltage here um, right now we've got 12 volts and I'm going to take it now to the maximum of say 24 volts right now and again with the ratio right between the primary and the secondary should be a difference of 20 now if I was using the other um, the other primary which I suspect was 120 volts then the ratio between the primary and secondary would be 10 so it would be 120 in and 12 out and of course this one here is 240 in and 12 out so let me go ahead and bring it up to 24 so now without me even looking um, it should be about let's say uh, divided by 20 it should be around 1.2 volts so here we go so it's 1.2 1.2 volts so the ratio for this winding is 20 and the ratio for the other winding other primary winding should be um, 10 so let me go ahead and um, try the other winding hope this kind of makes uh, sense again um, it's always about the the ratios no matter what voltage you're going to put in the primary or secondary the ratio say if it's 10 to 1 or whatever is going to stay the same so let me go to the other the what I think is 120 volt winding and we'll see if what kind of results we get there so this time we got the white and yellow which was the um 
leads to and three I believe which was actually the lowest resistance it was 308 ohms so let me go ahead and um, bring up the voltage to 12 volts AC and um, the ratio would should be 10 and I should get 1.2 volts here so I'll go up oh I'll way over um so I am right about 12 volts now of course the ultimate test is to bring this up to uh, line voltage but then I warn you um, unless you really know what you're doing or um, are licensed um, you could end up hurting yourself uh, if you do it this if you do this right and um, now if I would do this now I would go ahead and have a different kind of set up here so I got a different um, setup here now and again um, now this is just how I would go about doing it um, I don't recommend for anybody to really do this unless you really know what you're doing or license when I say doing this I mean working with uh, line voltage if you do do so at your own risk okay I'm ready to start here uh, the multimeters in the AC position is hooked up across the secondary I'm using the uh, lower primary windings which I said was 110 120 volts um, and here once I feed in 120 volts into the primary I should be getting 12 volts out here around there kind of ballpark but it should be pretty close and as far as the current um, is concerned because not only we want to know the voltage but the current well that's anybody's guess you would have to hook up some kind of load here I guess for a couple hours and it would see how hot the transformer actually gets I mean it's not supposed to get it can get warm but it's not supposed to get so hot it would burn your uh, finger so I guess it's always what I want to say it's always best to get the uh, original transformer uh, or if the if you had a unit and the transformer was missing say it was a radio or so you could hook up a uh, uh, ammeter and figure out uh, how much it was drawing you know if you if you actually ran the cassette at the same time turn up the volume all the way ran music into it so it gives you kind of an idea how much current the thing is going to draw um, also as I mentioned earlier my isolation transformer does have a fuse and what you could do here of course uh, you could have rigged something up with a fuse in between uh, that can be done to make it even um, safer but again as I said uh, do things at your own risk here um, I kind of know what I'm doing so let me go ahead and bring this up to 120 and see if I was kind of right I'm never like exactly right I'm almost like kind of right so right there it's right around 120 and I can't see the meter from here because I'm behind the camera, but I'm venture, I venture to say it's about um, 11, 12 volts, and there it is. It's about uh, 11 volts. Well, close enough. Again, as I said, best to get the exact replacement uh, transformer. Now there are transformers that are even a lot more complicated than this one. I guess it would take some doing to figure that, uh, figure that out. Anyways, um, thanks for watching.